everybody to today's cookery Pesach session and making lots of different things, starting with a frittata, which is another word for like a quiche without a pastry bottom. And it can be used for uh, Pesach and also for any time during the year. So we're going to start, I'll go through the ingredients. We've got the eggs, we've got all the spices here that I've weighed out earlier. I think we've got um, turmeric, cumin, and salt and pepper. And in this bowl here, we have the uh, weighed out the matzo meal and baking powder, which I forgot to tell you about. Um, I just managed to get that from the deli this morning, kosher le Pesach mm -hmm. baking powder. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to use uh, if you're gluten free, for example, and, you, and for Pesach, you want to be gluten free, you could use potato flour, but I'd only use two and a half ounces of that. That would be quite enough. So either would be fine. And then when it's not Pesach, I use three ounces of buckwheat flour and one ounce of rice flour, which is quite nice together. So we'll start with, we're going to crack the egg into bowls, check they haven't got any blood spots, no blood spots, thank goodness, and just cracking them all up, six eggs into the bowl, and then we are going to mix all that round in a larger bowl, and so the eggs are going to here, the reason I did it like that was if there was a blood spot, we'd have to throw that away. Then I'm going to mix um, mix these eggs up in a, a nice size bowl with the whisk here. And then I'm going to add the spices. So I've just added all, all the spices and mix again. Quite a lot of mixing. Good for your arms, good for your muscles. Then we're adding the potato flour or matzo meal with the baking powder. And I always like to stir everything just to be on the safe side. It gets, gets more air into the mixture. And then we're gonna mix that again. And then we're gonna add, it's actually a really easy mixture. Um, earlier I made some other ones using smaller little trays and I, so this is all mixed, you get rid of all the lumps, make sure it's really smooth, mix it for quite a while, make sure it's really nice and smooth, should be like an orangey colour. And then we're going to add the uh, spinach, which is, I've used frozen spinach that I've drained and squeezed out to make sure there's no residue of water. And I just add that. And then I'm going to add the butternut squash that we made earlier, where I've just cut them up into cubes and they've been roasted and they're ready to go in. Add all those together. And then I'm going to mix all that together with a spoon this time. So, and I'm going to add a little bit of cut up, one ounce of cut up parsley. And I'm going to save a little bit for the top, sprinkle on the top. Okay. I don't know if anyone's cooking along or not, but if you are, if I'm going too fast, just please stop me and I will go slower. So I've just, it's all together now in a lovely mixture. And then I've used um, one of these loose bottom dishes that you can buy in anywhere, Sainsbury's, Tesco, and or any baking shop or even online. And I've basically cut out a piece of paper, baking paper, and I've put that um, on there. And then I'm going to put it together. I've also greased the, all of the, all the uh, tin really, really well. Because I like to be able to see the fluted edge when you've actually cooked it. So, 
I'm now going to put this onto a baking tray in case any of the liquid does slightly leak out. So keep your oven nice and clean. And I'm going to pour this in and it should be really... And it goes in the oven for around about 20 minutes in a fan oven on a preheated on 160. And then I'll just finish it off by topping it up <coughs> off with some pumpkin seeds. Um, it's always good to have one of these spatulas just to get rid of, make sure you get everything in. So we've got it all in and it should be very tasty when we've cooked it. But I made some earlier just to try them out in smaller dishes that if you wanted to take them to work over Pesach, over Colomar or, or, or you just wanted, I made them in, into these little, these little dishes that also are loose bottom. And this is really useful actually. I made some mushroom ones with thyme and I've made some tomato and um, courgette ones together. And, and then also the pumpkin and spinach one. And now I'm just gonna sprinkle them with pumpkin seeds. I've lost my pumpkin seed. <laughs> so I will try and find my pumpkin seed. I've lost them. I'll just get some more out of here. Uh, so sprinkle with pumpkin seeds, if you've got them. I can't, I can't find where I've put them. Oh, here they are. Marvellous pumpkin seeds. Now I've roasted these earlier and I always keep a load in a jar pre-roasted. Not with, just on a piece of parchment. I put a tiny bit of salt on and they taste really nice. And they, they make it look nice. So I'm going to then sprinkle that with parsley at the end. And that will go in the oven for 20 minutes. Here we go. And then I'm going to, I'm going to just make sure that the edges of this potato are all definitely, uh, yeah. Two seconds. And yeah, it's going to, this is, once it's cooled down, which it's cooled down really. And then, you should take it out. It should come out really easily. And it should have a really nice fluted edge. And there we have it. Um, and you can use the, you can freeze these and you can use any different ingredients that you like to make with these. 